Okay, hear me out, because while I think OLED TVs are fantastic and arguably the benchmark for watching movies and playing games, with the big news from CES being LG's new OLED EVO panels, which promised to boost brightness by a modest 20%, and even then only for the flagship super expensive models, with most just getting a new processor and not much else, I'm kind of thinking that a lack of innovation over the last couple of years, uh, paired with limited brightness and still relatively high prices for OLED TVs, means new technologies like mini LED could actually change the whole industry. Brighter, much improved contrast that's closer than ever to OLED, no risk of burn-in, and crucially, they should be cheaper. So with mini LED coming in from below, offering possibly a better value proposition to OLED, and also micro LED coming in from above as the fancy new ultra high-end tech that may soon trickle down to consumer TVs, could OLED become a bit redundant? Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and first of all, I want to apologize for all the upcoming acronyms, all the LED, LCD, QLED, QNED, micro LED, mini LED. There's so many, by the end of it, you'll hate me and also TVs generally, but hopefully you will find this useful and also be as excited as I am for all the new technologies coming in the TV world. And if you do want to see more from me, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So this guy on the wall behind me is the LG G10. Uh, it's the 77 inch model, which costs about five and a half thousand pounds. And I absolutely love this thing. The incredible contrast you get with OLED means you get those inky blacks, rich colors, and we even get great gaming performance with this, thanks to low response times, 120 Hertz, G-Sync, HDMI 2.1. Plus the whole thing is just ridiculously thin. So it's pretty good, as you would expect for five and a half grand. And of course, OLED's biggest advantage comes from having each pixel being able to self-illuminate with no backlight, unlike a traditional LED LCD TV. So if you're watching a movie and an area of the picture is meant to be black, it will be, as each pixel can be turned off individually. So don't get me wrong, OLED TVs are great, but there are a few issues. Firstly, while they are a lot better than they were, say, five years ago, especially when it comes to brightness, which is the traditional weakness of OLED, they've only improved incrementally over the last couple of years. I think it's either five or six years now in a row that I've been going to CES in Vegas, where they show off all the new TVs, although of course this year uh, with COVID it was all online only. But for the last couple of years or so, the big upgrades, particularly with say LG's TVs, have just been new processors, which promise slightly better image processing and a bit better AI upscaling, which is very important when it comes to 4K and particularly 8K. But I don't think we've really seen anything that's made people want to rush out and upgrade their TV. But aside from some modest AI image and processor upgrades, at this year's CES, LG and Sony introduced slightly brighter OLED models for 2021, which is exactly what OLED needs right now, but frustratingly, they're limited to the higher-end models, like LG's new G1 and Sony's Master Series A90J. With more affordable OLEDs, like the popular LG C and B series, just basically getting a new chip inside. So arguably there's a bit of a lack of innovation, but as well as that, OLED TVs are still really, really expensive. LG's entry-level 2020 OLED, the 55-inch B10, is not an unreasonable £1,100 or $1,200, but the pick of the range would be the LG C10 65-inch, which launched at about £2,600 or so, and even after seven months is still over two grand. Vizio's new range of OLEDs is a little easier to swallow, though it doesn't get quite as bright as the more expensive rival OLEDs, but it's a step in the right direction at least. Then there's the small risk of burn-in, although to be honest, I don't think for most people it's ever going to be a problem, unless you turned off all the safety features like the uh, pixel refreshes and the standby time, and then just left a static screen or had the same HUD elements on for hours and hours and days at a time, then yes, maybe you do risk it, but I think for most normal people, you're never going to really experience burn-in with a modern OLED. On the other hand, Mini LED, being an evolution of traditional LED LCD tech, doesn't suffer from any burn-in issues. And it can also go a long way to solve one of the biggest problems with traditional LCD tech, if the processing behind them is implemented correctly. The fact is, most people don't have an OLED TV. I think it makes up about 3% of the market share, so the vast majority of people still have regular LED LCD TVs, which are lit by a backlight made up of a grid of LEDs. The problem is, small groups of LEDs are used to light dozens if not hundreds of pixels, which are called local dimming zones. But now we have Mini LED, which, well, as it says on the tin, is just a smaller LED, so you can cram in thousands and thousands more. So for example, a good LCD TV will have a few hundred LEDs, while mini LED models can have anywhere from 1,000 up to 30,000 in the case of some top-end models. 
and having more LEDs means more local dimming zones and better screen uniformity overall as there are smaller gaps between each LED. The problem is, the biggest unknown when it comes to mini LED is just how well each TV's processing implements the use of all these local dimming zones. Just because a TV is mini LED isn't a guarantee in itself that it will be automatically better. If the software algorithms aren't developed to make effective use of those extra zones, then the potential benefits to, say, contrast in particular could be wasted. And not just that, there's also a serious processing overhead for all these extra zones. So this could potentially be an issue, particularly on cheaper TVs with less powerful processors. And so an advantage of OLEDs is that they don't have dimming zones to be controlled or processed in the same way. Instead, each pixel is mapped with the display information directly and then is lit accordingly. So these new mini LED TVs could offer close to, not quite the same, but similar performance to OLED while crucially being a lot cheaper. For example, TCL, who are best known for their slightly more value-oriented TVs, brought home just how good value mini LED TVs could be, even 8K ones, compared to OLED. And it's not just lesser known or budget brands that are jumping onto this mini LED bandwagon. Samsung's newest QLED Neo range uses mini LED, and also LG introduced their new QNED or QNED range, which is definitely not confusing at all, which also uses mini LED. So I'm thinking, if I can buy a mini LED TV that offers similar contrast and a similar image quality to an OLED TV, while also being brighter for a lot less money, that seems like a pretty good deal. But that's only half the story, because to confuse things even further, we also have micro LED TVs, which are much further from being available and will be very expensive to start out with. But think of micro LED as an evolution of OLED. And so each pixel on a micro LED produces its own light, which means you get those perfect blacks, but with higher brightness, better HDR abilities than OLED, and also no risk of burn in either. I genuinely think micro LED is the future, but right now it's limited to Samsung's crazy uh, modular the wall setup and also uh, billionaires on their fancy yachts can buy some massive, very, very expensive ones. For you and me, I don't think micro LED TVs are going to be really uh, an option until probably next year at the earliest, and even then they will be very expensive. But my point is, with micro LED trickling down from above and mini LED offering better value from below, it could push out OLED in the middle unless we start to see some bigger innovations in the OLED world. And it's not just TVs either. I think mini LED based monitors and laptops are just as exciting. Although it looks like for now these will be limited to high end panels to start with. Although Apple is expected to add mini LED displays to their upcoming iPad and MacBook Pros, which is pretty exciting. So I really am genuinely excited to see what mini LED can do because either uh, we get new better value TVs that offer similar performance to this but for less money which is great or it gives brands a kick up the backside to innovate a bit more and actually make worthwhile upgrades year on year not just whacking a new processor and maybe add 20% brightness to the flagship models. The caveat though, and something to look out for in mini LED TV reviews, is how well each model handles all those extra dimming zones. If the processing is poor, then you'll be paying for all those extra LEDs without getting the full benefit. But what about you? What TV are you using at the moment? And what new features would tempt you to upgrade? Let me know in the comments below. But make sure you have hit that subscribe button and stay tuned as I'll be bringing you all the latest OLED reviews and also comparisons with mini LEDs. So it's going to be a really interesting year in the world of TVs. Cheers for watching and I'll catch you next time right here on The Tech Chat.